What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel and today we're going to be talking about a massive gas shortage that has been affecting the United States or I should say better that it will be affecting the United States as people have been panic buying gasoline over the last few hours. If you haven't been watching the news or keeping up with any recent events, there's been a massive cybersecurity incident that attacked a pretty major oil pipeline here in the United States that has in turn caused a pretty massive panic here and has caused people to run to gas stations to buy up as much gasoline as they can, thinking that, you know, supply of gas is going to basically just disappear overnight. It kind of reminds me of back when this whole coronavirus thing started early last year when people ran to the store to buy up pretty much everything that they could. Do you guys remember that? Back when COVID really started to kind of get its grip on everything, people were going to Walmart and they were buying $7,000 worth of toilet paper, Campbell's soup, as much frozen pizza that they would need to feed a small village. I mean, people were being completely overboard with everything and people are doing that with gasoline now. Before we get any further into the video, I just want to say that nearly half of you watching have yet to subscribe. I try to post multiple videos per day to keep you entertained, so consider leaving a like to help support and subscribe with notifications on so you never miss anything. Also, all of my socials are on the screen right now, so consider leaving a follow on these for more awesome content, and also consider grabbing a shirt if you're really awesome. Now, to the rest of the video. So the catalyst of this entire thing was a massive hack that shut down something called the Colonial Pipeline. Now, the Colonial Pipeline is one of the larger gasoline pipelines in the United States. It supplies a massive amount of the petroleum products that are used for actual, you know, like the gasoline products that you'll buy at like gas stations. It's also used for things like jet fuel, so for airliners and things like that. It's very critical for the South and the East Coast of the United States, and it's leading to temporary shortages in those areas of the country. Now, from what I understand, other regions of the United States, including the Midwest, the Southwest, the West Coast, the Northwest, these areas of the country are not expected to be affected by any shortages of gasoline, or at least they shouldn't have been. At this rate, if people keep buying up all the gasoline like there's not going to be gas tomorrow, there could be potential shortages, but... As of right now, what's expected to be is, in the South and the East, potential gas shortages. But people have been running to gas stations to buy as much gas as they can, expecting there basically to be no gas. And you gotta kinda understand why, right? I mean, people hear that there's been this massive incident or whatever, and they might not have gas tomorrow. People gotta go to work, they gotta drop their kids off at school, they got errands to run, people have things to do. Of course, you know, the world still kinda runs on gasoline, we're not a, you know, Tesla running world or anything here. But that's not even the only problem. We're not only facing gas shortages, but we're also facing price increases at the pump too. As a matter of fact, it's already being reported that due to gas shortages and panic buying at gas stations, that gas prices are already rising as far as 10 cents per gallon in some areas of the country overnight. Now you combine that with the fact that over the last few months, gas prices have already been pretty much skyrocketing, I think all across the country. I mean, here in the Midwest, they've already been going up pretty dramatically. And this is bound to already cause even more anger and people to be more pissed off than they already were, which is something that I've always been kind of weirded out by. Like, I understand why people are mad about gas prices to a certain extent, like, yeah, no one wants to pay $5 for a gallon of gas. That's insane. That's ridiculous. And there have been times where that is the case in some parts of the United States. But, like, you need gas, right? So, like, I feel like most people are going to pay it regardless. But this all was caused by a cyber attack, okay? So, basically, what happened was a 5,500-mile pipeline that delivers nearly 50% of the gasoline in the jet fuel for the United States' entire East Coast was the victim of a ransomware attack. Now, when this attack was discovered, the company claimed that they took certain systems, but not all systems offline, to try and contain the threat. And this temporarily halted all of the operations of the pipeline and even affected some of their IT systems. Now, back on Thursday, their network was supposedly compromised and almost 100 gigabytes of data was taken hostage by this ransomware attack. This was done by hackers that reportedly had locked up all of this data and they said that they were going to actually leak all of this data onto the internet if the ransom was not paid. It was likely a cryptocurrency ransom. Now, the reason that the pipeline was shut down and that this is even kind of an issue in the first place, the supply was kind of altered in any way, was to prevent these hackers from having any control over the pipeline in the first place. Now, since they had basically gained some sort of access to the servers, there was the, I guess, possibility that they could have control over basically half of the oil for the United States' East Coast. So the pipeline was shut down and there's basically been a massive disruption in the oil supply for the entire East Coast and South of the United States. And it's gotten to the point that the United States federal government, the president, 
everyone has basically had to get involved here. Biden pinned some of the responsibility back on Russia. He claimed that there was evidence that the group or the software that was involved in this ransomware attack actually originated in Russia, which at that point automatically makes this more of like a national security threat. Obviously, we're not really buddy-buddy with Russia, and if some group is kind of sheltered in Russia and they're, you know, kind of committing ransomware attacks against half of the oil for the east coast of the United States disrupting the gas prices and supply for tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of Americans. That's a pretty massive problem that I think a lot of people are definitely going to be kind of worried about. Now, at this point, we're not 100% sure if this is state-sponsored by Russia. Honestly, if I had to personally throw my opinion in on this, I think they either know that this happened uh, beforehand or they definitely endorse this action. The United States, Russia, pretty much all, a bunch of different countries all around the world have been doing things like this to each other for years. I mean, if you look back to, like, Iran a few years ago, the United States, or I should say somebody who wasn't the United States, wink wink, basically destroyed a massive part of a nuclear facility in Iran to kind of uh, disrupt their progress on enriching plutonium and whatnot, so... These kinds of things have happened and they've become more commonplace over time. Cyber attacks have become something that are a lot more commonplace, like even just a few months ago. I made a video talking about how hackers gained access to the water supply in an area around Tampa and they were able to actually alter the amount of chemicals that were being put into the water supply in a city just a few miles away from Tampa. And in that video, I talked about how we as a country needed to take these kinds of threats more seriously. We needed to take the idea that people can kind of remotely access these kinds of important matters much more seriously. And when you see an incident like this, I think this is, it shouldn't be a wake up call, okay? Because I feel like we've been having wake up calls for a decade and a half now. I mean, how much of a wake up call is half of the East Coast's oil being held hostage, right? Like that that's more than a wake up call. When gas prices are shooting through the roof and people are lined up for four blocks to go through Sunoco just to get a full tank of gas and they can't get it, all because some guys in Russia used Windows PCs to hold an entire fucking company hostage in America. Like, aren't we already, I would say, kind of beyond the wake-up call? Like, aren't we already kind of beyond the, oh, hey, maybe we should open our eyes to the problem? Now, the United States is trying to get this problem under control as fast as possible. Uh, they're writing legislation, executive actions, I should say, to try and get this under control. The U.S. Department of Energy has claimed that they're considering moving supplies of oil and gasoline by train or by ship if they need to, which at this point it's going to seem like they're going to need to because... As it stands, everything is moving by so slowly that, well, of course, we're going to be seeing gas shortages and it would be best if they just, I, I think, just start moving forward with what they're going to do. And on top of that, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency issued temporary fuel transportation waivers to increase the supply of gasoline. Virginia's Governor Ralph Northam issued a executive order allowing state agencies to issue their own fuel transportation waivers and also provided increased funding for state and local governments to ensure adequate fuel supply. In North Carolina, government Roy Cooper similarly actually suspended fuel regulations to try and get gasoline flowing again. The gas tax was suspended temporarily in Georgia. Weight limits on trucks transporting fuel was also lifted by Brian Kemp, the governor. Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis, in his own executive order, said he would activate the state's National Guard if necessary, quote, as needed in response to the temporary shortages. It's being said that operations for this pipeline in specific should be returning to normal by the end of this week, but of course, well, by the time I'm uploading this video, it's going to be around midday here on Wednesday, so the end of this week is what, Friday, Saturday? You know, what is it? What, what are we talking here? A couple more days of this? At the rate we're going with all this panic buying, with, with the continued shortages, with the continued problems, I mean, we're going to continue to see prices and gas rise more shortages, right? Like, this is not a good situation unfolding. This is something that needs to be, I, I would say, stopped now, right? And, I mean, I understand that you can't be 100% vigilant for issues like this, right? You can't stop every single cyber attack, right? You can't live in a perfect world, but I mean, these are the kinds of things that, like, you have to see coming, I think, right? These are the kinds of things that we should be more prepared for. Like I said earlier in the video, we're, I think, beyond the wake-up calls, right? We're beyond the, oh, hey, let's get our heads together and, and within five years, let's make this something that we actually care about. This is something that now we as a country need to start working on, right? When we have to get government federal agencies involved because companies are getting their pipelines shut down, I think is when we really need to start actually seeing a problem here. So if I can give you guys any, I guess, uh, last message here, it's don't go ahead and, and go buy gas just because, right? If... You got enough gas to make it through the end of the week, you know you do. Honestly, just sit on it, relax a little bit, 
Don't be one of those people that's taking six gas canisters down to the gas station and buying as much gas as you can. You don't need $250 worth of gas to make it through the rest of the week. There will be gas next month, okay, right? Like, if, you, if you're doing okay, you're doing okay, right? Like, we're gonna be fine. We don't need an incident like last year, and it's already getting to that point again, folks. Like, can we really not do this again, please? Now, with that being said, though, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel. Follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to optimus Make sure to check out Shop Opti down below. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus Well, not panic buying gas, and signing out.